Okay, Don, we are recording. What are we talking about tonight? All right. Uh, first, uh, we'll talk about uh, the, like backyard beekeeping, uh, people that run half a dozen or a dozen hives. Uh, I'm getting a lot of people from out of state come over here. And the first thing that they don't really understand is the techniques, how I'm teaching the commercial people. I'm trying to shave seconds off of every movement that a person does. And work in a commercial yard is totally different than in the backyard. Uh, most people think when they open their hive, they have to find the queen. It's not necessary to find the queen every time you open a hive. Basically, you can open the lid and the first three seconds, you can tell if you've got a queen in there or if it's noisy, no queen. It'll usually be quiet if you have a queen in there or a queen cell. So to get in a beehive and just root around looking for a queen every time doesn't make much sense. And if, even if you're going to be a hobby beekeeper and sell queens, you can't catch two queens an hour and make much money. And I'm trying to teach people to spot queens, catch them. A minute, two minutes, if you can't find them, just move on. Um, it's totally different the way you work your bees in the back of your house than trying to make a living at it. So if people got questions on that subject there, we'll try to cover a lot of that there. Or if you got questions about honey, stuff like that, I'll try to help you. I try not to do much honey. In fact, people in Atlanta are saying they're – in a dearth right now. I'm setting frames out right now, and I think Greg seen me do it and a couple other students here last week. They're sitting out there, they're not even robbing it. And most people come here and they say, you got too many hives, you're not gonna make any, any honey at all. Well, I'm getting honey bound here for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, there's a lot of misbeliefs or misnomers going out there about you can't do this, you can't do that. If you want to do something, you can do it out there. No problem at all. So who wants to jump in there and ask some good questions tonight? It looks like Chris is going to be first up. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Don. How are you doing? I've got a question about uh, splitting hives using queen cells. Uh, mm -hmm. When's the best time to, to do so? Is it when, when, whenever first you spot the queen cell, the capped queen cell, or... Um, for example, if you knew when when the queen was hatching, to make the split the day before it hatches, or what's the best way there? The best way is as soon as you get your hive crowded and they start making cells, do a complete inspection on the hive, clear to the bottom board, and check it out. See if you got cell starter or if you're not. But once you spot those queen cells, then you need to mark your calendar and go back in there in nine to ten days. 11 is going to be borderline. So I try not to make a split doing a walk away. If I have a split I'm making, I usually make it with a queen cell or a mated queen. That way you're up and running real fast. You don't lose time. And another thing is if you make a walk away split, you run a high risk of robbing. Yeah. Unless you're eating all the time. Yeah, but what I was interested to find is Say uh, I had a hive that I knew when the uh, when the cell was uh, when the cells were about to hatch, and uh, I mean I'm talking queen cells. So and I made a split like four days before it was about to hatch. Is that a yeah. good thing to do, or just wait till, until like a day? If you before? know when they're going to hatch, if you if you timed them out, I like to get it about a day to two days at the outside because the weather's been very erratic this year. It's two days ago, we was down in the 40s, high 40s. And anything below 55, you're gonna get chill brood. And yeah. that's another reason that I like to cut cells out or use a grafted cell. You're not risking a lot of brood. People that make a walk away, when the temperature drops, you've got a half frame of dead bees that they're hauling out the next day. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, and how how can you tell when when the cell is about to hatch when you don't know when it was uh, when it was cupped? If it's brownish looking and then gets a little bit thin on the end, another way is that you can hold it up to the sunlight on an angle and you can see the queen in there moving. And if you got plastic, uh, you just have to put them in a 
a queen castle. If you got wood and wax and they look firm and they're kind of brownish looking and just a little bit of a light tip, one way to do it is cut out an inch plug around it, at least three quarters of an inch around from the side of that cell. You can put it in your ear and you can hear that queen in there scratching or you can hold it up to the sunlight and you can see her moving in there. That's the sure way of knowing if you've got a cell that's good or not. Okay, because I, uh, I had uh, several cells in one of the hives, and, and I, I noticed uh, two days after the inspection, some of the some of those capped cells were like uh, chewed out from chewed the side. The yeah. you got a queen walking in there. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, I didn't spot her, and there was no no, no laid eggs at the time. There. Well, they're not going to, if you got chewed out cells, they're not going to start laying. Usually they tear all them cells down before they start laying. That queen has to go out and mate first. Mm -hmm. So the worker, worker bees, they don't chew the cells down. Once they make it, they let it hatch. Well, I don't know. I'm not inside the hive. I know they mm -hmm. chew them down if you got a queen in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks, Al. Okay. And over to our one of our newest admins uh, in the Facebook group is Greg Burns. And I can't unmute you, so do it yourself. There you go. Hi, Greg. Hey, guys. I want to thank you and Don for uh, having me as the new moderator. Me and Stan there. I'm sure uh, you can join as much as I am learning from everybody and having a little more hands-on approach. Uh, the last B chat. I was uh, broke down to Don's front yard there with a million bees trying to figure out how in the world we're going to get them down the road. But nine states, four trucks, and a million bees later, we were able to get Don's uh, fat bee man stock to a bunch of happy people. A bunch of those folks are actually, uh, they listen to the bee chat all the time. I see one of them at there, Tyler Miller. Hey, Tyler, he's he, uh, supported Don's bees in the whole nine yards there. So I want to thank everybody who listens to the, uh, the bee chats. Who's on Don's page? Who supported uh, Fat B Man Bees? It means a lot to us. Uh, we can support Don that way too. It supports us, so kind of we all get to uh, help keep uh, those, those bees moving around. So uh, big thanks to Don too for uh, all your mentorship, all your help. Uh, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to go and learn from Don, I highly recommend it. And if you happen to have a if you happen to have a broke down Chevrolet in Don's front yard, you can troubleshoot that lab from 10 feet away. So uh, he's able to he's able to tell us exactly what was going on with the truck, and, and sure enough, we all we got down the road. So uh, just want to say thanks again for everyone who helped support uh, getting down to bees across the country. Had a lot of help from a bunch of friends and family to, to get us picked up and going from state to state to state, but we made it. So uh, just want to say thanks again. And, and now because of all that, we've got uh, Don Stock in Ohio with Moose and Queens. I'm looking forward to keeping them fat bee man bees going. So thank you again, everybody. Okay. I hope you learned something down here. <laughs> and over to Anthony. Go ahead, Anthony. If nothing else, Don, everybody, everybody that's come to visit you, they rave about how much they learn, and they learn too much at once. So don't well, worry about people getting information from you. They're getting it. I can't understand why people come clear across the United States to come over here, and I'm not a well-educated person, and most of them coming here have masters in beekeeping and that, but I guess they just don't have that hands-on approach, and I'm trying to get more and more people out there to carry the torch on because I'm getting a little old now. I'm slowing down, and I'm hoping to get people in every state that can pass on the same common sense approach to beekeeping that I've been promoting here. Well, maybe there is somebody, but I don't know of anybody that's doing what you're doing for passing on the knowledge. And there's nowhere else you can go and get knowledge from a commercial guy who's been keeping bees over 55 or however many years you've had bees. There's nowhere to go that I know of, right? Well, one thing that I find is uh, commercial people don't want to take the time because when you take a, a beekeeper with one year or even five years experience, their way of doing things is slow and so much slower than the way you work. Most people can't grasp the way I'm working. 
you in and out of a hive in a minute to two minutes. I mean, you're moving 40, 50 hives an hour. And when you tell people that haven't been here and watch an old man work, they won't believe it. I mean, and I'm just doing what I normally do. That's why I don't come, because I could never keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a guy, I think it was just yesterday, a guy posted, uh, I think he said he had two nukes and he wanted to know how he could make money faster. <laughs> and, you know, I gave him a pretty long answer. Um, you know, get some, fi get some five frame boxes. They're going to... Uh, make more bees faster in the five frame, everything you teach us and mm -hmm. go get some boxes, go buy some Queens, get a couple of packages, split the packages and, uh, and get going and go through that and learn how to overwinter bees wherever you live. And then next year, go see you and you'll show him how to make more bees than he can make boxes to put them in. That's, you know. that's the facts. I've told many a person here for the last 15, 20 years, even cutting cells, you will never build enough boxes to keep up with that. You yeah. start out with 25 packages and within a month's time, you're a, almost doubled or tripled. And then in another month, you triple that again. So it's, it grows fast. And uh, back to what you said about Queens when you first started. Two weeks ago in one of my boxes, they built four cells very close together. There's, there's no way you could have ever cut those cells. There was four cells together. And, uh, and so then I looked, you know, and I, I found the queen. There's a big fat laying queen in there. She's not laying like crazy, but there was larvae in there. And then I'm wondering, what the hell are they building four cells for? So the next day I was just going to pull that frame and, and just make a split with it and see how it went. And when I went back in there the next day, they had already taken about 75% of it down. You know, there was only a little bit left at the top of each one. It looked like a queen cup. Yeah. Uh, but just like overnight, they took those four down and they were, they all four were capped. So I assume they had pupae in there. Once they're capped, best time that when you see them is to move them right then because by the time you get back the next morning, they're, they're tore down. Yeah, well, that was, that was the case here. So they do things that we'll never know why they do it. They got a mind of their own. And I think if every one of us, when we're, when we're new, uh, they want to see that queen. I did. You want to see that queen, and you knew – and you're fascinated with your new bees and you're going out and you're looking at them every day, every other day. Uh, and I was, I said this before, you know, I think I was probably one of the worst when it came to finding a queen. For like the first four months, I couldn't find a queen that saved my life. I would have paid somebody to help me find <laughs> that queen. Uh, and then it just kind of came to me, you know, I mean, you need to know where to look and what to look for. Granted, she can be anywhere. She can be on the side of the box. She can be on an outside frame, but usually they're not there. What I found is I look at those couple of frames in the middle of the cluster that have the brood. That's got blave, open brood, and that's where I seem to find mine. You know, I'll take out a couple of frames so I have room to work push a couple of outside frames. And then I start looking, if I want to look for the queen at that day, I start looking for the queen in the middle. And I, I can find my queens now very easy, you know. Uh, they, you just need to know where to look and what to look for. You know, usually I see the queen and she's surrounded by workers. She'll have a circle of workers around her and they're all, everybody's looking right at the queen and they just move with her and it was just like someone hit me in the head with a hammer and then all of a sudden I could I can find the queen. I don't have any trouble at all finding them now, but boy, I went through hell the first four months. I couldn't find one for nothing. So It takes that, the time for the eyes to get learned. Yeah. If anyone's having trouble with queen, eventually it'll come to you. And now one other thing I'm going to say is uh, 
Dr. Sammy Ramsey is going to be here in Thailand for June, July, and August. I'm waiting for him to answer what day he's going to arrive. And I'm going to be spending some time with him when he's here, going to take up to some of the uh, commercial bee yards around here. And he's going to be working with Chiang Mai University, which is in the town I live in. And he's been here and worked with them before uh, on Varroa mite. And this time he's going to be uh, more concentrating on the tropolalap mite, which is another mite like Varroa. Varroa is the round, kind of brownish red one, and the tropolalap is a more cigar-shaped, smaller mite. But they're they're kind of worse than the Varroa because they're more prolific and they reproduce twice as fast. So um, I just sent Sammy an email, I think yesterday or the day before, ask him a couple of questions and I've already done a lot of uh, advanced stuff for him coming. And if there's anything else he needs me to do between now and the time he gets here. And uh, I also ran it by him uh, I'd like him to uh, come and be a guest speaker one day while he's here. If I can get him to get up at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure he'll do it. So hopefully sometime in uh, June or July, we'll have Dr. Sammy here with us on Sunday morning. I hope so. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. I'll let someone else go. Thank you. Okay, over to Philip. Go ahead, Philip. Hey, Don. Hey. Hey, I uh, got just a quick question. Um, I have some, uh, I did a split last week. I got, I talked about last time I had a, a medium on top of three, or I had a deep on top of three mediums. And I split them. Um, I put a queen into one. And, and then now I have the three mediums and, I, and they're, I got brewed all the way up through with those. And I just saw my overwintered queen in that one the other day. Um, can I take a deep, an, another deep, not that the one I have now, and put that on top of the mediums, let them build that up, and then put that back on the bottom so I can start splitting off those mediums? Because I, I want a deep going into winter. So would that be the best way to do that? Well, you can just take another bottom board and put a put the deep on that and set another deep on there and just checkerboard that. Take all your mediums and do the splits off of that. Okay. I mean, I took one hive and I made 12 splits, or David made 12 splits off of it. And those was all mediums. I mean, you know, okay. as long as you got queen cells, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I had some, but um, I don't anymore because now, I, like you said, I've I didn't have enough equipment to put the cells in. So when I, I did a walk away and they built nine cells. Yeah. Um, but right now I just want to get the mediums back on top and get them for honey and a little bit of brood. I want, because I want all deeps on the bottom going into winter. So, um, yeah, I just wonder if I could set it up there and just let them build. Cause we're not really in a big honey, uh, flow right now anyway, but they're bringing them, they're bringing stuff in left and right. Um, and then I took three frames out of that deep and started a nuke. And they're already, I mean, they're already almost outgrown that. I'm probably gonna have to go out when it stops raining um, and put them in a deep. Uh, and then what about overwintered, uh, like your honey and stuff like that? I've got a bunch of honey left over, but it was, I did use acetic acid last year. So do I just keep moving that around and let them have it or save it for winter or can, is that extractable or not? It's extractable. There's okay. probably less oxalic acid residue in that honey than what you're eating vegetables every day. Okay. There's a big to-do about nothing. Yeah, I know. I've heard the big to-do. They're like, oh, you can't do that. It's Water won't hurt you, but if you do it in excess, it'll hurt you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Don. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. And over to, where'd he go? Joe Mills. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I just got a few questions for you. Okay. Um, I got one of my nukes, and I have a queen in her. I saw her today, but she's laying like five or six eggs per cell. How old's the queen? 
She's only a month and a half. Mm, that don't sound right. And did you make the split a month and a half, or did the queen been walking a month and a half? Well, I made the split about a month and a half ago, and I washed her hatch out. And I'm assuming it's the same queen I saw hatch out. Usually a queen about three or four days will straighten out. They'll just eight, lay three to four eggs. But if they're laying that many eggs for that long a period of time, I'd say three weeks, you got a laying worker in there. Okay. She was laying good for a while, and then this week I noticed that multiple eggs in a cell. Maybe she got replaced, and that's another queen in there. Okay. Do you think I should just requeen it or just see what happens? Well, what I would do is take that queen with two frames and move it off by itself and let them make a new queen or put another queen in that box there. Okay. That way you can isolate your problem. Okay. Uh, I got uh, your. I watched a couple of your videos on mini nukes. And I saw you adding some comb in it, dude. There need to be eggs in there, other than the queen cell, obviously. Well, it depends what how many hives you have. I have six right now. I'm trying to build more. Well, if you're going to do with mini nukes, you're going to have to take a divider and put it across one of your boxes and make your half frames. They're nine and a half inches. So when you put two of these mini frames together, it'll equal 19 inches. That's why you put a bar across horizontally. And if you run an eight frame, you can run 16 frames in there and put it over a good strong hive and let them draw it out. If the queen goes up there and lays in there, then all you have to do is take one frame, put it in a box, add a cup of bees and a queen cell, and you got a, a, a box to make a queen in. Okay. okay. All right, I just got one more question for you. Okay. Uh, I got some hive top feeders on my cuff of my nukes, and I put some syrup in there today, and I noticed a lot of it. was like they're starting to start to rob. Um, is there a certain time of year I could feed them this? Or, yeah, I mean, the hives are pretty strong. How, how are they going to rob? You got the entrance reduced? I do. And I, you know, I was watching them drag bees out today. Well, if they're dragging bees out, it's possible they could have got into some pesticide. Okay. All right. Hive top feeder, if it's sealed good, they're not. They're coming up from underneath. They're not going to die in there. Okay. All right. I think that's all I got. Actually, man, okay. one more. I was watching your uh, on the pollen substitute. Uh huh. I saw your video, you guys making some. Do y'all buy some or do y'all just use that that you make? Well, when we use it, when we use it, we make it. But right now, there's enough pollen coming in. And if you try putting too much pollen substituting, you're going to have a high beetle problem. Okay. I wasn't planning on using it now. I was thinking more of a future reference once it gets toward the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, over to Tyler. Go ahead, Tyler. Hey, Don. Hey. Um, so I installed a package last week that I got from Greg, and the queen, she got out of the cage, and um, she's been running around on the frames for about, about four days now, and I'm still not seeing eggs in that nuke. She's running around on the frames and everything, but she's not laying any idea – are you feeding? Yeah, I'm feeding. They're, they got plenty of plenty of sh food in there, but she ain't laying yet. Well, the best thing to do is put your back to the sun in the morning and put your hand in the center of the – take a frame right out of the middle and put your hand on that frame in the middle. And if you've got eggs in there or anything, you should look for white milk at the bottom of the cell. It usually takes about five days. If the queen got out a little late – It'd be another day or two, but usually the queens are out in about four days. Yeah. Well, they, she's walking. She should be healthy. Yeah. Today I was in there and they had started making some queen cups, um, but obviously there's nothing, nothing in the queen yeah. cups. They made up like four of them. Well, one thing you have to watch is if you don't have enough hives, people get tinkeritis and they get in there and they start tinkering around too much. And you open the box up too much. If you're wearing gloves and a veil, you can't see what you're looking at. And if you bump that queen, she's not going to lay. going to get damaged. 
Yep. Are you kidding me? I don't have to wear any of that stuff with your stingless bees that you have. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've been really good bees. I really like them. I, I, uh, I split two packages into four nukes, mm -hmm. and uh, the other three nukes, uh, the one is just taken off like crazy. <laughs> came out gangbuster she's already got like two frames of legs <coughs> laid up and she's firing away on all cylinders and so yeah. all right i was just curious I, i'll just keep an eye on her checking next well, time don't get in there too often you know that you know that's the thing when new beekeepers are in and out of that box too much and you, yep. if you're not careful you bump that queen worst comes to worst you can always pull a frame of eggs out or brood out of the center and then exchange it with one of the other other hive that the queens make sure you shake the bees off when you reverse them yep cool thank you very much hey. okay over to joshua go ahead josh hi don hey um yeah i got a, a quite a number of questions first of all uh we have uh, quite a number of nukes with virgin queens in them and um i'm wondering does does a virgin queen ever lay eggs before she's mated not normally. Okay, because we have one nuke that it, it appears like there's eggs in the in the cells, but we're not sure. Um, is there any other way to know when when she's mated? Like any obvious signs? Well, you look for eggs, and you look for the development there. But mm -hmm. you know, it, do you have enough drones in the area? <clears throat> well, from looking in the other hives, there's there's lots of drones. So, how many hives you have? Uh, at least four, a um, bunch of nukes. Well, you got a low number of hives compared to nukes. Then, if you're going to do that, there, what I suggest is putting a green frame in each of your strong hives. That mm -hmm. way, you overpopulate drones. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you're not going to get good matings. Okay. Because just cool. to see a few drones in there. It takes upward to 40, uh, 40 drones to mate one queen. And if you set out 50 nukes, you know, that's a lot of drones. Mm hmm Sure. All right. And uh, another question. What size do you, what width do you make your five-frame nukes? I What's make mine nine and a quarter wide. That's pretty much a standard. That's inside dim dimension? Outside dimension. That's what the, out, the end piece, you put a rabbit around it, three-quarter rabbit up each side and down the top, across okay. the top. Sure. And also, uh, as far as ventilation on those five frames, what would you recommend? Do you put a hole in each end or just the back? Are you running a standard bottom board or are you putting a piece of plywood on the bottom? A uh, standard bottom with a three-quarter inch front opening. Okay, well, we're running a, a three-quarter or an inch and a one-eighth hole in the front and the back with screens over them just for additional ventilation. Sure. All right. Uh, one more. Um, so I, I live in an area where there's a good bit of farming in, right um, locally, and I know they're spraying some pesticides. I know they're spraying some fungicides and um, I think some herbicides, but I'm just curious – what can I expect if I try and put some hives out? Is is there going to be a good bit of damage, or should I try it? Well, you're going to lose, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. if you know when they're spraying, what you could do is close them up. Use hive top feeders, and you could always put sugar in there, sugar water, syrup, and that way you can keep them. You know, if they're going to spray on one day, keep them closed up for about three days. Sure. All right. Uh, that's everything for now. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Over to Dwayne. Go ahead, Dwayne. Uh, just a quick question. A uh, lady called me up, and uh, she was wanting to know they were, she'd got home and they were spraying ammonia in the fields, the farm fields. They just started getting into high gear around here in the middle of Indiana, and she was wanting to know whether to close them up or not. And I didn't know what to tell her because this was the middle of the afternoon, and everybody was already out shopping, so to speak. So. <laughs> I just told her she probably ought to leave them alone because I didn't think ammonia would hurt them, but I wasn't sure. Didn't know if you knew about that one or not. Well, we have chicken houses around here, and they have a lot of ammonia in that there, but, you know, anything that anybody spraying is not good for bees. Yeah, I was just curious she, because it was like in the middle of the afternoon, and she's, it's the warmest day we've had, and I, she's yeah. like wanting to close them up, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. 
Well, you can close them up if you've got adequate ventilation. That's why we put an inch and an eighth hole in the front and the back. If we have to, we can close the bottom up. You know, if we've got them on a regular standard bottom board, you can put a screen in there. Okay. Now I get some more energy. I'll get back down and see you for another couple of days, but uh, it's going, I got to get some vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> you got all them bees sold yet? Uh, I sold about 10 of them. I kept the rest of them. I didn't even want to sell those by the time I got here, but uh, well, I'll get over that. Sells. <laughs> Come down and get another load and stay a week. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Yeah, the ones I brought back up here, we got slowed down quite a bit. Um, we'd have three or four good days and nights, and then yeah. we'd have three or four days where it'd get back down into low 40s and high 30s, so the bees would get going, then the, they'd put the brakes on for a little bit, and then they'd take off again, and I think it's finally settled down. We got some warm days, and I spent the last couple of days going, just keeping on going through everything, and it's about to explode on me is what's about to happen. <laughs> okay. Give E all your information so he can get you on there so you can get some referrals for buying nukes and stuff. Yep, I'll have to get with him. Yeah, like I said, I get, get a little more energy, and things slow down for a second. I'll come back down, and I need to learn how to do that queen thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be satisfied with just doing with cutting the cells, but if um, two days ago, if uh, I would have done some grafting and stuff like that, I could have made fifty splits so fast it would have made me silly. But um, nobody was in the mood to make queen cells. I think I had about five and everything total. I'm like, come on, girls, <laughs> put the feed to them. That that's the main thing. People don't want to feed them. You put that feed to them, yeah. you can make them. Buy you a, a incubator, get one at Tractor Supply. My son's got all the stuff there, and he got one. You can run three to five hundred queen cells in there. That ought to keep me satisfied. <laughs> well, you can sell queen. A lot of people are selling queen cells that are ready to hatch within twenty-four hours. They're selling yeah. for ten dollars. If we have extra ones, I sell them for five dollars. But you know, we're we're going through a lot of them. I've never seen people go through so many queens. Everybody's trying to change up their genetics and stuff up here to. Yeah. They're getting to the point where they get a hive that's a little bit testy at all. They're ready to to sh shape it up a little bit. <laughs> well, well the, good talk to you. People are uh, getting too much uh, hype on these different type of breeds they're breeding, and yeah. it's like purebred dogs. They they breed out the good stuff, and, and then the bad stuff stays in. So yeah. I just don't run no purebreds. Just run a bunch of mutts. And they yeah. <laughs> so far, so good, because I've been running around out here like – Acting like Don, buddy. I don't have no gloves and veil or nothing on. I only got stung three times in the last three days. I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get off here and let somebody else have a shot at you. Talk right. to you later. Okay. Over to Ernest. Yeah, you got to unmute it. Can you do it, Ernest? He's still muted. There, there you go. go. Okay, you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, my neighbor isn't in here, so I'll ask the question for him. Uh, he asked me, uh, he had a uh, uh, hive split, and he's got queen cells in the middle boxes. And <coughs> he put that on the bottom box. Will the brood... Uh, stay down on that cell and head on the bottom or will they stay up with the brood? It depends on how many bees you got in that box. If you don't have enough bees in there, they're not going to cover it if they get cool weather. Would they stay on the brood rather than on the queen cell then? No, that's the, the biggest problem. People do walkaways and if they only made two queen cells on a walkaway mm -hmm. and they got full frames of brood, they'll cover the cells up and they don't worry about that brood. They'll let it freeze or cool off or chill. They don't care. They want to preserve the queen. So they'll stay on them cells and nothing else. Yeah, okay. So best to cut the cells out and put them in individually and just shake some bees in it. Yeah. Uh, have you introduced a uh, virgin uh, queen in the cell. I had uh, some, you know, I put in, I think I got three of them out of five that took. How do you do it where you have a virgin queen? 
Well, I mark my hives out there when I pull queens out or, you know, if there's no queen, I know they're queenless. I let them walk in the hive because when Stephen brought his incubator over here, we had about 20 of them that hatched out in the protectors. I just took the protectors out, let them walk right in the hive. That's when they're first hatched there, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if they got a little age to them, how do you introduce them? Well, you can spray them down with a, a light sugar water with a couple drops of, of vanilla in there just to descent them. Uh -huh. that's, that's the easiest way to do it. Nothing fancy. Okay, and another thing that happened, I uh, did the observational hive, and while I had it out, I marked the queen. I thought that would be nice. People can see the queen real easy. And, you know, uh, they replaced her. Yep. They didn't. They didn't like that Mark Queen. She must. Maybe I didn't leave her out long enough to get the the paint smell dry or what. But they replaced her. That's and now the, they're up there. They're ready to swarm. They got a big uh, big ball of bees on the outside and two queen cells inside. So. That's a common problem. That's why I don't like to mark. If you're going to mark, what I usually do is mark the queen, put her in a queen cage, and wait five to ten minutes. Depends on what you mark her with. Make sure it's completely dry. Or you can buy those stick-on numbers. You know, they're a little pricey, but, you know, they stay, you know, probably 50% of the time. Yeah. Yeah, most, most of them I've marked, it, they, have, uh, they have cut the paint off of them. Yeah. Or most of it. They chew it off usually in about three days, four days. Yeah, I, I'm for my own purposes. I'm not going to mark anymore. Yeah. So. Well, you know what? I always tell people you want a queen marked. I charge ten dollars, and they look what? I say that's stupid tax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I had my son over today, and we set up. Uh, I I waited for him. He was away. Till he got here, so I set up. Uh, a starter hive and a finisher hive, and then we grafted, so he got to do all that. Yeah. So I told him I only charge him 50 bucks. He said, well, that's a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm trying to train him, so hopefully he can get enough interest in it to maybe take over one day. So. You can't force them. they got to want to do it. Right, right. Yeah. So that's all I have for right now. Okay. Okay, and over to Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Hi, good. Uh, I've got a question about um, when. When's the best time to check to check the splits that I made from the queen cells? How many days should I leave after the known date of hatching? It's like four, or five days. Well, I can check. I check mine a lot more oftener than that because I'm doing it commercially. I mean. Uh, David probably could answer that. He follows me around the bee yard. He watches what I'm doing. Tell him how many times I check boxes there, Dave. Where'd he go? Are you muted, Dave? Yeah, I think he's muted. Can't get him. Can you unmute yourself, Dave? You got too many buttons on that computer. <laughs> I guess not. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Hey, Don. It's been a while. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I got 20 packages from you and Steven uh, about mm -hmm. March 20th, and uh, now I got 35 uh, five-frame uh, hives. I've sold six, uh, and over the last four weeks, uh, I've been just walking around with some, uh, just some foam sunglasses, and that's it, and I haven't been stung yet. It is really a joy to work with those bees, with those Georgia bees. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I haven't got stung yet, and I, I'm, I'm really wondering about whether or not they even have stingers. 
Um, well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's why, you know, we get a lot of business. And I got another couple coming from Texas over here. Uh, and then I'll be speaking over there in Willis in July. So uh, a lot of people probably want to figure out how we do things. But I'm basically geared to introduce people to the commercial end of it, how to make a living. At it. Well, I'll see you in July. I got a front seat. You got a front seat, huh? <laughs> I, I, you know, I just decided uh, uh, I'm full-time beekeeping now. I just decided to go full-time. Yep. Uh, it, it's just too much fun. It's lucrative. Yeah, oh yeah. You, you and, can take those some, stocks you got right now and split them again. Yep, and and I would have, but I just can't make the boxes fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, I, uh, my new project here <laughs> is to start figuring out how to graft. Okay. And uh, so, thank you for everything. Okay. That's all I got. How's your, how's that frame set up? You got it permanent? No, uh, they pop out. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use JC cups because it's just too easy. What and I would do is take from the top bar, and you should have your first bar fit right under the top bar. Then about right. two and a half inches down, you put another bar, and then there's another one. It should be three bars that are together. Yeah, this, this this isn't a deep. Uh, I, I, if I had a deep, a I, I could get a third bar on there. No, that's a medium then. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. You're good, but I would have got that uh, top bar up right underneath the top bar because if you don't, they're going to fill that with burr comb. Right. You learn by doing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, thanks for everything. I appreciate it. Looks like you'll get going there. Oh, I'm going to come up and see you pretty soon. I, I'm I'm planning it. <laughs> okay. I'll put you to work. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Over to Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Don. How are you? Hey. I um, I, you kind of answered this question as you were. Um, the gentleman was asking about the um, multiple cells in multiple eggs in the same cell. I had um. I had a little goal of how many nukes I was going to sell, and that happened very fast. Um, and so I'm down to kind of a bunch of new queens in there. And we were, I had a gentleman here buying a nuke today, and we were going through them together. And I noticed it's a brand new queen. Um, she just got mated. She's just starting to lay. But a couple, couple of those cells had m multiple eggs in them. Is that typical um, of, you know, a brand new mated queen kind of starting out? Yeah, they sometimes they have multiple eggs for two to three days. Some even go about seven days. But if it don't straighten out by then, then you know you have a laying worker in there. Okay. All right. That that's kind of what I was thinking. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And over to Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah. So on uh, one of your videos, I I heard you say that when you go into a hive to inspect a hive. Um, you you move all the frames to one side to make room to pull your first frame out, or you leave the rest of the frames alone and just pull the first one straight up? Um, I basically run two or three frames to a five-frame box. Mm -hmm. The only time a five-frame box gets five frames is when it's ready for a full pickup, when it's sold. Okay. And the thing that most people do is they try to pull the frame straight up, if you've got two frames missing out of that box, you can take that frame that you're going to pull out and move it diagonally. That way you don't roll queens on the end bar. It gives you that extra little room. Yeah, sure. Makes sense. And one more question. Um, so say you have a, an eight frame box um, and you're, I notice you space your frames like a finger's thickness away from each other. My That's question for queen cells. Okay, so that that's kind of was my question. What what's the purpose for that? So that encourages queen cells? No, that keeps the queen cells from being bridged. If you have the frames tight against each other, and you've got queen cells on one or two frames, they will bridge from one comb to the next. And then when you pull that comb out, you'll rip the side of those cells out. It's a thing that I I've see. learned over the years to save a little money. I see. Sure. 
So normally, if you're not making queen cells, say say you would be making um, honey or whatever, you would put them against each other then? If I'm making honey or if I've got a production high for shaking bees, yes. I put them okay. all tight together and I center the frames. Every right. box, whether it's a five frame, eight frame, or ten frame, has got an inch extra spacing there that's made for a queen cage to slide in. So okay, if you don't sure. center them and you leave them off to one side, they're going to make an extra row of comb over there. That's usually where the queen will hide. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. All right, my friend Andrew here has a question. Okay. Uh, you done? Um, I was just wondering about treating with oxalic acid. Mm -hmm. um, about how much, how many times do you treat with brood? I or treat year round. Uh huh. But like, do you do it in um, like weekly or? It depends if you got a lot of beekeepers around you or if you've got it in an area where they're moving bees. A mm. truckload of bees going down the highway can have a lot of mites flying off of it. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to keep an eye on your hives. If it's your living, you know, you take care of it. Uh -huh. Some months you have to do it twice a month. If you've got a hive that hasn't been treated, then do it every week for at least three, three times. Then you can go to once a month as a maintenance type deal. But if uh -huh. you want to keep the mites down, Keep them out of the hive. Do it twice a month. Yeah. Okay. For a couple of pennies, it's worth the doing it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna try. Let's see. We got. We're gonna try David Holloman again. Let me see. He's got. And all right, Dave. Try it now. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Somehow done. I'm. I'm I'm on as my phone number. I, I've actually, I, I need to be sitting next to E in his living room so he can show me what I'm doing wrong. But to, to answer the earlier question uh, about checking the hives, we sometimes we will check the same hive two, three times uh, before lunch. Um, and I, I know this is kind of reverting back to, you know, 10, 15 minutes ago. But when, when uh, Don's looking for the queen cells and he's moving things around, um, when he can tell you pretty much within, uh, you know, 30, 45 minutes when those cells are going to hatch. So we keep going back and checking those cells, uh, looking for the virgin queen to hatch, and then we'll move that real quick and then leave the other cells or leave her there and move the cells. But it's, it's checking an awful lot. It, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work just keeping up with them. And Don can tell you, okay, that hive over there, we should have something coming out within the next 30, 45 minutes. We'll go over there and uh, there'll be a virgin queen walking around that was a cell that was kept, not, you know, when we got there that morning. So I, I, I'm just, <clears throat> this may not make a whole lot of sense because I'm kind of backed up, you know, from several questions ago, but we checked the hives very, very regularly there in the morning. And it's, it's, it's quite a, quite a thing to see. Okay. And Chris wanted to add something as well. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. So <clears throat> does it, I've heard somewhere other than one of those videos about when you check the nukes that has like uh, recently hatched queens that you may make them to leave or, or not to mate that kind of stuff that's why i was asking whether i should hold for like four or five days let for checking, checking cells that, that hatch that, yeah. that would prevent them from mating yeah i've picked no. up queens that hatched within seconds literally hatch right in front of my eyes pick it up at my fingers leave it on the next frame take that frame if it's got multiple cells and i'll move it 10 more times that same day or in the morning and get 10 more queens up uh-huh. I see. Okay. That's, so I that's shouldn't the be... whole problem with the internet. A lot of free information out there, but free, no good information ain't worth a toot. Yeah, uh, I see, I see. So I, I shouldn't be worrying whenever I got time I can go over and check whether it's yeah. okay in the high. Right. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And over to Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Hey Don. <clears throat> I went down and saw Julie. Warren down in Winding Creek Hayfrey the other day picked up about 15 of your queens. I'm going to try them out. 
see if they'll calm some of my eyes that I've got some problems with. <laughs> I'm anxious to see how they do. I think they'll do good. Uh, also, you might I, do pretty good for you. I hope so. I may have to pick some more up in July when we're down there. Well, I can get some more for you. You come down, let me know. All right. Uh, also, I'm just going to let everybody know that I've been cleaning frames with the Clorox like you showed on the videos as far as dipping them. And now I'm letting them sit a lot longer probably than what you do. But if you can see it, they come out pretty clean. Yeah. They were, they were pretty dirty. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, we'll let you know how your queens do in Texas. I bet they oh, okay. <laughs> All right, see you. Okay, we got new people, Jason and Linda. They're bashful. They got to have those questions there. <laughs> oh, look at that! He made his hand go up real quick. <laughs> All right, Jason and Linda, go ahead. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, we're glad to be on the chat. We've uh, been uh, watching the videos for a little over probably a year. And uh, we, uh, we lost everything this last year and uh, due to some errors on our part and had to start from scratch again this year. But uh, we, uh, we're, we're looking forward to coming to see you hopefully in a couple of weeks and get about 25 nooks and uh, bring them back and start doing some mega splits as you've been talking about. What do you run at? Uh, where do you run from? We're in Oklahoma. Uh, okay. Pretty much right smack dab in the middle of Oklahoma. All right. Uh, and what do you run? Ten frame, eight frame, or fives? All five frame. All five frame. And uh, we're running them um, uh, just this last week. We, uh, we we understood finally that crowding them did not necessarily mean a uh, space, but a number of frames in a box. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, Pulled them all back to three frames in five uh, frame uh, high. And uh, so then we went out and uh, uh, did our inspection and after cut some clean cells and set up a couple more uh, nooks. So hopefully we're, we're moving in a good direction and uh, we just need to get a higher bee population so we'll have something to work with. Are you building your own boxes? We did. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, over the last two weeks, we built 60 boxes that are ready to go as soon as we get back. Uh, but you're buying 25 nukes? What's that? You say you're going to be buying 25 nukes? Buying 25 nukes, and uh, I, I'm, I don't know if this is the right way to go, but um, I'd like to be able to buy 25 additional queens to be able to get back and immediately do a split on the, on the nukes that I'm going to get from you. The nukes that you get from me, you probably could split four times or five times per box. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I mean, Greg has looked at, actually, Greg has loaded up his own bees here. And so he went through them, and you always have extra boxes here. So if for some reason you don't like the color of the queen or the laying pattern, we have extra boxes you can get. But I would be building, uh, if you got 60 boxes, I'd build you another 200 because that will last you about six weeks. Well, that's what I was thinking. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's another key uh, part of the questions. Uh, where is the least expensive place to buy a pallet of boxes from? You can try Antler Ridge. Uh, I don't know, you know, if he's got them. Because since I give him a couple of plugs out there, he said he's been sold out. And there's people have been waiting for his stuff. What I'm able to get locally, uh, I'm able to get a, uh, a nook box uh, and, and with top and bottom, and they're covered with uh, that marine uh, polish that basically makes them waterproof on top and bottom. And uh, I'm able to get those for about $25 a unit. And I, I can't see that I can get that any cheaper online anywhere. Well, if you get a hold of Todd Barnhill, uh, he quoted me $7 on a box. Now, you could get a piece of plywood and throw it on the bottom, a piece on the top. You can uh, cut it 22 inches and make a migratory lid. I mean, it's fast. It's quick. For $7, I mean, I buy them by the pallet full. See, I, can't, I got my own sawmill. I got free labor. I still can't beat the price. Yeah. 
Well, and and that's that's kind of where we are, Don. I mean, I have a wood shop. I have you know uh, table saws, radio alarm saws, a whole shooting match. Yep. But the bottom line is, with between the cost of the wood and the time, I I, I mean, at some point you just are like, well, I gotta buy it from somewhere. Yeah. It, you know, it already takes ten minutes from five minutes to build a box that's pre pre fat. The thing to do, though, if you're taking a, the $500 course, take a a lessons and buying the 25 nukes, get with E, and he'll put you on the page, and you'll start getting customers. Well, that's and, exactly, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do, yeah. uh, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, Buy extra packages and mark the price up in the package. Most people mark them up 50 bucks. Okay. Okay. I mean, you can pay for your trip over here. I mean, there's guys from Texas coming over here buying 100 to 150 at a time. Uh, Don, how many nooks can we get in the back of a pickup bed? I don't really uh, relish the thought of hauling a trailer and then bringing a trailer back. Is it a full-size pickup? Yeah. You can get 40 to 45 in there with no problem. Good. Okay. We knew that you helped uh... – be able to basically not really palletize them, but be able to do a preload so that they can, you know, make the trip and we could drive nighttime and not. Well, you don't them. palletize them. You, you have to put sticks between them and nukes, even though they're individual boxes, they got to have a minimum of three inches between boxes because they have cross heating. Right. Heat will transfer from one box to the other. And actually it just, it's a snowball effect. They get hotter and hotter. And yeah, then we put strips right. on the top. Everything gets, unitized in the truck it won't move that's what yeah that's what we understood so we're looking forward to it um have you already set your money in for the deposit and everything we're sending again next monday uh this uh, we had we had uh, uh it's got, it's on had its to way. get vacation arranged but it's on its way okay it's coming okay yeah. I got to know because we, we sell our nukes all the way up into november so right now we're starting to get in high gear yeah. Well, what we're going to want is we want 25 nukes, and I guess we probably ought to plan on 25 uh, uh, packages, too, and, the, and the additional queens. So, I mean, okay. we're going to bring them back quite a bit of bees. All right. We can handle it. Okay. Okay. Over, okay. Over to Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess not then. Um, over to Joshua then. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah, so on one of the chats, is probably actually probably a half year ago, you talked about making queens at a certain point in, in the summer that I guess it's called the solstice or whatever you, however you say that. Mm -hmm. um, so could you explain that a little bit? You said something about... Um, that's the best time to make queens, and in the spring they'll lay it a lot better. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, it's the bees when they hatch the queens, they think it's springtime. They go through that magnetic field there, and they've always done better for us. I mean, we make our queens starting late February, first of March. That's when our first batch of queens go out, and then uh, we do them all summer up into November. Mm hmm. All right, sure. And then my friend here has another question. Yeah, I was just wondering about being registered or, um, uh, yeah, inspected. To what state are you in? Pennsylvania. I don't know what their regulations is, but most states you can sell off your farm without being inspected. But it's, if you're going to get into very large numbers, it's a good idea to be inspected. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're going to ship... Uh, interstate commerce across the state line then you should have an inspection sticker on your package or your nuke okay it's to your benefit to be inspected mm -hmm. okay thank you okay okay over to chris go ahead chris hey um i've got a final question for tonight uh, about uh honey and, and pollen frames. So I've got a, quite a few frames of pollen mixed with the honey, and uh, I, I used them up for the, for making my splits, but I still got uh, quite a few of them in one of the WD pipes. 
can I store it in a cool place somewhere and use it for later in, for, my, for my splits? You can, but, you know, if you're running very many numbers, you need a lot of freezers. If I got frames out there that's full of honey, I just set them out and let the bees rob them out and make more bees. Okay. And is it for is, if I wanted to extract uh, for home use, it's not probably a wise thing to do because there's quite a bit of pollen and, and that would be useful for the splits, right? Yeah, it'd be more useful for the splits, but you can extract a frame that's got pollen in it. I mean, run it through a sieve. Yeah. You know, it's going to taste a little yeasty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, I wouldn't I'll, do it. Is you're, usually, you got all kind of honey in there. If you got pollen, you got a lot of honey too. Yeah, yeah. There's, there was uh, almost the top box was full of mixture with honey and, uh, yeah. and the pollen, which, uh, okay, I'll try to. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Sam. Okay. And over, we're going to try Craig again. Go ahead, Craig. Hey, Don, how are you doing? Hey. Hey, I um, have a lot of plastic frames, and I've been doing what you said about crowding the bees mm -hmm. and letting them make queen cells. And I'm starting to change over to, to, to wood and, um, you know, foundationless frames. But so I'm having to move the whole frame when I'm making uh, splits with queen cells. Um, when, when should I go in? On what day should I go in to inspect and make sure I've got a laying queen? Well, if you know you put a queen cell in there and it's a ripe queen cell, usually mm -hmm. it's going to hatch within two days. Then give her another three days, four days, and you should start seeing eggs. Okay, so she'll, she'll mate and, uh, and start laying that quickly? Weather permitting. <laughs> okay, okay. I, for some I mean, reason, I was under the impression that it took like, you know, three weeks after she hatched. Or No, if you got a queen that hatched and three weeks later, you're looking for brood, you don't see none, it's already getting too late. Right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, and then um, the guy that uh, was talking about getting inspections raised a good question. I'm like the people um, that's going to come buy some nukes from you. I live in the state of Oklahoma as well, and okay. we don't have a state apiarist. So we don't have anybody that inspects anything. So if we're selling, uh, what, what would your recommendations if we're selling nukes that are going to cross state lines? Because we don't have any, we don't have anybody to inspect anything. Get a hold of the uh, Department of Agriculture. They should have a plant and uh, animal section but going to whether to get inspected or not what i tell my students if you're going to sell nukes all you have to do is sell two nukes to one person and then he comes back and says i got foul brood from your bees and now he wants to sue you for losing a thousand hives mm -hmm. it's it's out of the question yes but it's possible but now if you get an inspection from the state, they come and give you a certificate saying you're free of all communicable disease, foul brood, whatever. They don't check for mites, but get the inspection it's for your benefit. Okay. But you're sense. selling off of a farm. You don't really need it. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and over to Josh Moore. Go ahead, Josh. How y'all doing in that? Hey. Hey, Don. Uh, I guess you heard of the case of foul brood was found in Tennessee this week? No, I haven't heard that. Of course, I don't sit there on my computer read all day. I've been out working the bee yard. No, I hear you. Uh, yeah. There was a case of foul brood found out toward Memphis this week, and um, I reckon they... Was it certified by a state bee inspector? Yes, it was, and they ended up. I think it was a commercial. I'm not. I'm not. Don't quote me 100 percent, but I think it was a commercial operation, and it showed them burning hundreds of hives. So well, that's the the right the state has to do. If they condemn your yard, they'll come burn and dig a pit and burn everything. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I just. Uh, I got in a little late this evening on the chat. I was, boy, had a baseball tournament today, and I was trying to watch you coming up road. Of course, I couldn't talk coming up road, but uh, done a bunch of splits this week. And I told you a couple of weeks ago when I was down that I had some uh, 
some honey hives that I was going to split up and I actually made, uh, I had one deep, I made six splits on probably eight, nine days ago and they really took off. See, so, I tell people you can do one, two, two frame splits, but no one wants to listen. Oh yeah, I, I was doing, I was taking my five frame nuke boxes and taking a, a good healthy frame of uh, brood and uh, another one that's got a little pollen and a little honey on it sticking in there and they just all took off like crazy. So, but I'm going to get back down. We, uh, our high school baseball team went, made it to state this week. So I'm going to be in middle Tennessee all week, high school tournament, but probably the week after I'll probably come down and spend a couple of days with you. One thing about that fowl brood though, is if you're going to sell bees from your property is I don't like anybody to bring old used equipment in the back of their pickup truck on my premises to pick up bees. I usually try to meet them at the driveway. If I see old equipment, I run them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed when we was yeah, down there that day. Chance. Yeah, I noticed that day we was down there. You always got out of out of the bee yard, except when somebody, of course, came and bought a nuke or something from you, but uh, bought a plastic box or something to put them in. But yeah, that's yeah, that's smart thinking. But anyway, just want to jump on, and say hey, and listen to everybody, and and join the chat. Okay. Okay. And over to Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, hey, Don. I've got a question. Sure. About how many hives do I need to reliably have enough drones to mate virgin queens? So, well, how, many, how many virgin queens are you trying to mate? Two or three. Oh, one hive should have enough in it for that. Okay, because I've got a lot of drones and a couple of hives that uh, they were they were trying to uh, swarm, and they had made a lot of drones, and and I mean, there's a lot of drones in in two of my hives. So I just wondered. I wasn't sure because I don't well, really have got a lot of drones. Maybe you got bad genetics there. You know, that's something to think about too. Well, no, they, um, so she, she had laid up, these were from two nukes and she had laid up five full, well, four full frames of brood. And then when they started wanting to split, she started laying uh, drone corners yeah. on everything. And then they started making swarm cells and, yeah. and all of that. But, um, I wasn't sure. I don't. There aren't really any feral bees down there, and there's one other beekeeper within two miles. If you're in doubt, the best thing, though, in the in the cheapest and the longest thing, long run, is to buy some good queens of good stock. That way, you can control your genetics in your yard there. Okay. Enough okay. stock. Okay. I, I and I talked to Stephen about trying to buy some queens. Uh -huh. So okay, thanks, Don. I appreciate it. All right. Okay, looks like we got time for one more question. Josh Moore, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just going to jump in here, Don, and ask you. Uh, I'm wanting to. Uh, are you going? Are you doing any queen rearing in the next couple of weeks? Or excuse, me, queen rearing. Listen at me. Any um, grafting in the next couple of weeks? Uh, hopefully, my granddaughter comes over. She usually runs it back there for me. Right. Okay. Because I'm wanting to uh, do some grafting or learn how to do some grafting. How many hives do you have? Uh, just see, I've got, uh, just about 23 or four. I think I would wait a little bit, get some more hives up, save the money. Okay. You can, you can cut cells and go to a hundred, 150, just cutting cells with that many hives. Okay. Unless you're going to turn out four or 500 a week, you know, you know, I'll take your money, but best thing to do is use it more wisely. Well, yeah, I was just thinking about selling some queens. I've got a bunch of people wanting queens. and it's, Do you have enough boxes to put the queens in? <laughs> that's another well, thing. That's, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I'll come down and continue our little <laughs> escapade here in a couple of weeks. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, then that'll do it for tonight. So thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see everybody in two weeks. Appreciate everybody showing up. Stick around for the after chat if you'd like to.